everyone, Liam Duran here with a great new video for you. I recently returned from a photo adventure in southeast Utah where a friend and I spent three days in the backcountry photographing an incredible desert canyon filled with beautiful waterfalls, colorful cottonwoods, amazing scenery, a bit of quicksand, and plenty of easygoing adventure. In this video I'll discuss a few tips and tricks as well as some gear suggestions for both photography and backpacking. Along the way I hope to provide some inspiration for your own photo adventure. But before we jump into the canyon we spend some time photographing a few spots on the plateau followed by an evening camping under a massive canopy of brilliant stars. seemingly in the middle of nowhere, but uh, we are up on top of the gulch right now, and this morning we will get packed up, and I'll show you how that goes and all the gear we bring, uh, all the camera gear and camping gear we bring to get down there, and uh, yeah, we're going to spend the next three days down in the gulch, two nights, three days down there, so here we go. All right, so I figured I'd take you through like uh, meals for a couple days, what that looks like. Pretty simple, um, you know, two dehydrated meals. Uh, I don't love these, but when you're out photoing all day, um, they're fast, they're easy, and they're good enough. A uh, couple apples, uh, pretzels, some nut clusters, cookies, two breakfasts, some dried fruit, uh, a little bit of tuna, and some good a good hard cheddar cheese. Uh, I'm not a super huge eater when I'm out on the trail, so that might not... Oh, I almost forgot, most importantly, my coffee. Um, uh, anyhow, I don't eat a ton while I'm out there, so for some folks that might not seem like a ton of food, but, um, you know, I don't want to carry too much, and that'll be plenty for me. Uh, so, yeah, that's about all I eat. So we're going to get this packed up, and uh, and then I'll take you through the rest of the gear as well. Here's what goes into my pack. An ultralight Big Agnes Fly Creek tent, a Big Agnes 20 degree down sleeping bag, a Big Agnes sleeping pad, jet boil stove, extra clothes, water filter, food, odds and ends like toothbrush and headlamp. And all of that fits easily into my Granite Gear 60 liter pack. My camera gear will all ride up front in my Think Tank camera pack that attaches easily to my backpack. With gear all set, we head cross country to where we will access the canyon. But the way in is so narrow that we drop our packs over a cliff so we can shimmy through the tight passage. dropped into the canyon, so for the next few days it's nothing but hiking, camping, and taking lots of photos. Every photo I made in the canyon was shot with the Sigma 2470 DGDN art lens on the Sony A7R4 camera. Well, we've arrived at some of the, uh, some of the first objectives that we wanted to shoot, and um, Unfortunately, the leaves are looking pretty bad here. They're just kind of dead. There's no vibrancy to them at all. They're just kind of brown and faded and not looking that good. So we're going to move around a little bit and see if we can at least get some sort of a shot out of this. But it's a little, little bit of a drag to see that, uh, that it's not really, the colors are not really happening. So we'll see what we can figure out with this and uh, we'll make the best out of it. While the lower canyon was a bit muted, we found better colors as we hiked upstream. 
There was ample evidence of heavy flooding in the canyon, and it seemed that moisture had been trapped in the canyon as everything was very wet. Some photographer friends we saw in the canyon seemed to think this trapped moisture is what muted the fall colors. Lucky for us, we did find some gorgeous cottonwoods in some prime locations. The hike is sublime. We move slow and take our time to ponder the forces that created this beautiful place. Anyhow, uh, coffee and breakfast, we're pretty much wrapping it up. Surprising thing in the desert here, uh, it is super wet. Everything is really dewy and sopping wet, which is not um, what you really expect in the desert typically. We do have some clouds overhead, which are, well, they're kind of breaking up a little bit now, I think. Um, but uh, if it were to rain in here, that would not be a good situation. We'd probably want to boogie out of here, but I don't think it's gonna rain. Is it gonna rain? No, I, uh, I specifically asked for no rain. No rain, all right, cool. Um, so what are we gonna do today? I don't know, maybe go up to, do you wanna check out that hidden lake? As well. We can leave camp here to dry out That's a little bit more thinking. too. Yeah, yeah. Go back, backtrack a little bit to a spot that we wanna photo and then work upstream and uh, we'll see Coyote Gulch today, Jacob Hamlin Arch and a couple other things too, so. Arch. All right, so without a doubt, the worst part of the day, putting on the cold, wet socks and cold, wet shoes. Not that fun. It's probably like the 40 you know what? I gotta say, it's not quite as bad as I was expecting though. So we're at this really cool, um, little pool, blackwater pool, and it's reflecting like crazy. It's really pretty. There's a, we got at least one yellow. Is that, I think that's an aspen tree actually back there. It looks um, like it to me too. Yeah. yeah. And some really cool markings. It almost look like a Bengal tiger. So it's a really cool scene, but it's reflecting so intensely that it's really disorienting. Um, so we're trying to kick little ripples into it just so you can kind of, kind of make sense of what's going on here. Beautiful spot. So while most kids today will use Photoshop to make their photos better, Stephen here has a, what do you call that? It's a neutral, exaggerated neutral density filter. And what does it do? It uh, reduces contrast in the scene by holding the dark part over the- Hold it right up here. Right area of the picture. Oh, see, old and school. the clear part over the- The part that the you don't- part. Right. Um, this is two stops. I mean, the, dot, the top is two stops darker than the bottom half. Anyway, my my philosophy is to get it right in camera. There you go. Not doing Photoshop. Yeah. And uh, this is how you do it. I was only pretending not to know that, just so I could tell you guys, because I learned on film and you'd used a lot of ND filters on film. And I still own my ND filters. I don't shoot them that often any, anymore, but um, but they can be real handy in a spot like this. So this is really cool right here. I'm gonna show you guys um, another filter we're using out on the reflection today is a polarizing filter and I'm gonna show you exactly why. Um, you notice here in this frame, 
this rock wall is super bright, a little too hot, you know, lots of uh, highlights there. And then when you use the polarizer, watch what it does. I'm just spinning it and boom, it just darkens it and you can see all the detail in the rock wall there. It also darkens the water a little bit too. Um, it kind of makes the reflection a little bit, pop a little bit more. So polarizing filter, another really important one um, to have because you cannot recreate this in post. You're only gonna do this um, with a polarizing filter. Cameras in hand, we continue to explore the canyon and feel lucky that the cottonwoods seem to become more colorful with every bend in the creek. Moving upstream, the gulch just seems to be getting more and more beautiful until we find what I believe is my favorite spot so far. And then, Stephen puts on a tripod placement workshop for us. Um, so as you've seen, uh, we've been walking in water all day. You'd think there's tons of water and there is tons of water, but, uh, drinking and filtering, filtering and drinking that water in the Creek is a nightmare. Uh, it's loaded with silt and it will just totally gum up your, your water filter. So we've been looking for the whole time we've been out, been looking for these little seeps, little springs. And, uh, and luckily we found one right next to camp. So. Basically what's going on here is fresh, clean water of sorts is uh, just running down this wall here and it's filling up this tiny little pool with clear spring water. Um, and then Steven is uh, doing all the work and, and filtering it for me. But this water is much tastier than that water right there. Um, and it's, it's quite good. Ah, oh, that's good. Keep up the good work. All right, so earlier in the trip, I gave you guys the lowdown on all my camping gear, uh, but I never did give you the lowdown on the uh, camera gear, which is really simple. Um, basically, I brought one camera, one lens. Uh, I brought the Sony a7R4, 60 megapixels, 61 megapixels, whatever it is, um, uh, just to get, you know, the big, beautiful, awesome file sizes while I'm out here shooting landscape. Uh, and for the lens, I brought the Sigma 2470, the DGDN. It's a beautiful lens. It's fantastic. It works uh, really well with the Sony. It just mounts right on. I don't have to use an adapter or anything like that. So that is basically my entire setup. Um, I do have, of course, a polarizing filter, which is sitting in here at the moment. Um, of course, lens cloth and a few batteries. 
extra batteries here. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, and a tripod, which I'm actually using at the moment, but, um, but that's about it. Real simple uh, gear list. Now, do I wish I had had a wider angle lens? Um, yeah, probably. This is a narrow canyon. There's, there's plenty of opportunity to use a wider angle. I do have a 1424 that I didn't bring with me. Um, would I bring it next time? Yeah, I probably would. But in the meantime, what I've been doing to get around that um, lack of wide angle lens is I can just shoot vertically this way and then uh, do like a three or five pano stitch. So I'll get one, two, three, four, five shots and then I can stitch those in post. So that's kind of like a little cheat around having a super wide angle lens. Oh, and I do have a pano plate with me as well. I think it's in my backpack over there. Um, but that also helps to get your panos, uh, you know, as good as they can be basically. So, so that's it for camera gear. Nice and simple and uh, very high quality. We wake the following day to find the lighting conditions are completely different from the day before. So we grab a couple of images before heading out to our final photo destination and ultimately out of the gulch and back to the truck. When photographing fall foliage, it's really important to pay attention to the direction of light. Front lit, these leaves are, well, yellow but put the sun behind the leaves and they become a luminous glowing gold. Well, after three days of uh, being down here shooting in the gulch, we have fired our final frame. And, uh, and these old cowboys are smelling the barn. It's time to go home. And uh, we still aren't there yet, though. We have a fifth class climb in front of us and then a little, not too bad, about a two mile cross country uh, jaunt to get back to the car and hopefully a semi cold beer waiting for us. Um, but it's been amazing three days. Uh, we've had an absolute blast and uh, yeah, it's just uh, just an amazing place to to hang out with a buddy and shoot some photos. So Did you have any fun Stephen? <laughs> Make our way up the fifth class scramble and back across a sea of sandstone. And even after three days in the cooler, the beer is still cold. Thanks so much for watching. Please give it a like and a follow. And be sure to hit me with any questions in the comment section below. Cheers, buddy. Thanks again and hope to see you out there.